what excites me is the promise of what's currently going on. The amount of focus that has occurred in this space over the past 10 to 15 years has been exponential. I'm a firm believer we as a community should take some responsibility for helping the research efforts. What's so important about fundraising? You know it's all about research, but it's more about getting the message out. I think the other thing is knowing that you're helping the larger community of people with PKD, right? That, hey, there are things on the horizon and how cool is it to participate in that? There is going to be a potential cure treatment that will stop this disease in my lifetime. It's exciting times for PKD. Definitely it's bright future. It's definitely different than it was 20 or 30 years ago. So. It's very different how we take care of PKD uh, nowadays. PKD now, we try to slow it as much as we can. We can add more years to the kidney and kidney function and kidney health. That's very important to kind of understand that. And this is all based on research that has been done for 20 and 30 years in multiple places in the world and multiple centers in the United States and particularly Mayo Clinic has been pioneer in research in PKD. I've been in the clinical trial space for AD PKD for a long time and sometimes we can't tell which is the one that's likely to be the best one out of the gate, right? And we take the approach that there are a lot of different ways of making and improving the lives of ADPKD patients. So we're very supportive for clinical trials. When explaining the purpose of clinical trials to patients, we go over everything that we'll be doing in the process of that, including labs, et cetera. We go over the disease progression itself, what we aim to see and the goals that we'll see. We're basically testing the tolerability, the safety of the drug itself and ensuring that the safety of the patients come first at all times. It was actually exciting to get, you know, be, to be selected, to be part of a clinical trial with an experimental drug. The people who run the clinical trial did a great job going over what to expect. It could make your kidneys worse. It could have no change. It could make them better. You know, when you hear worse, it's a little anxiety producing, but, um, you know, the more you read about it and understand the clinical trial process, you're like, okay, well, give it a shot. And I participated in that trial and it was approximately six months. It was down here every two weeks and I spent a day here over that time frame. But I think, you know, being a pharmacist um, by background obviously was really exciting for me to be able to step into that role to test this medication. Obviously I did my due diligence. There's always a risk. There's always a benefit and you've got to figure out what, what that is. And I felt this was a really low risk opportunity and it might benefit me, but it might also benefit the whole PKA community as a whole. I think supporting patients may be my favorite part of clinical trials. We get to build report with patients over these various visits that we're having with them to ensure that they understand what they're in the trial for and what they'll be seeing, if anything. The ones right now that look the most promising are the ones that affect the amount and level of expression of polycystins. The two main genes that lead to PKD are called PKD1 and PKD2, and they encode for proteins called polycystin 1 and polycystin 2. And so right now there's a lot of genetic manipulation that increases the level of polycystin 1 and polycystin 2. And those experiments in animals look quite promising. The very earliest experiments are moving into the human clinical trial space and, and look quite interesting. But there's, I'd say, a whole slew of genetic manipulation of these small therapies that are coming right after that. They're all interested in this question of how do you increase the amount of polycystin 1 and polycystin 2 in these cells that are lacking it. And there are various different approaches that people are using to accomplish that, but I think we'll, we'll start to see some really interesting clinical trials in the next few years. And then there's still the traditional pathways people are looking at, so looking at mechanisms that accelerate cyst growth and then coming up with blocks in particular pathways for, for blocking cyst growth. Two uh, potentially very exciting areas to look at for future clinical trials. The future is bright for our uh, future generations with PKD. That's because I know that down the line we're going to have a cure. And I say cure not very lightly. Cure means like you kind of stop the disease completely. And given that it's a genetic disease, that means you have to go in and do a gene uh, therapy and a gene cure. I have uh, 
just a fantastic opportunity to be involved in the next generation of therapies. That includes the gene therapies that, that I've done a lot of work on, but there are a lot of other new therapies that are coming along, different biologics, even small molecule therapies. There are new tissue engineering types of alternatives to traditional transplant, and I think all of those are very exciting, better therapies for PKD in the future. We're working at Mayo Clinic Jacksonville to have these platforms where we can test on human kidneys that were otherwise going to waste. Those are uh, from cadaveric uh, kidneys uh, in a way. And we're gonna have a platform where we can have organ perfusion of these kidneys and keep these kidneys alive for more days, two to three days to test as many treatments as we can so we can advance it, we can adjust it, tweak it, so we can have the gene cure. I'm working very closely with my team on understanding the whole physiology and pathophysiology of how the kidney concentrate the water. And we have discovered a very novel way of how the kidney can concentrate the water independent of the vasopressin or the thirst hormone. And we're using that uh, to create a new drug, new treatment to use the kidney to suppress the release of vasopressin. In addition to research of understanding the disease and trying to create drug and cures, that's kind of my life, lifetime journey or lifelong dream is to cure PKD. We're using clinical research, all the data, all the information that we've learned across the years about our PKD patients. We want to use the best technology to help us understand the natural history of the disease and try to come up with what we call biomarkers, use uh, artificial intelligence, machine learning, and all the different uh, data that we can get from the imaging, from the blood work, and then trying to understand if we can uh, stratify the patients in a more of a continuum, which means if I have a patients who have very specific uh, characteristics of their disease, I can with very uh, accurate way say you're gonna reach kidney failure at age you know, 45 plus or minus 0.5 years. So give them as accurate as I can this prediction. And this definitely helps not only the patients to understand their, their disease uh, trajectory for them and then uh, plan accordingly, whether for their employment, whether their family, whether to be close to a medical center around that age to get the best care possible. This will be very, very helpful, not only in research, but accelerating these discoveries of these treatments from bench, which is the lab, to the bedside uh, where we prescribe it to, to the patients.